Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Jake Kessler. You know, Greater Southwest Insurance Company. Out there in Kingman, Arizona? That's right. Well, hiya, Jake. What's on your mind? Uh, one of my clients, Johnny, insured for $30,000, has a little cattle ranch. Name is Rafe Chisholm. Rafe Chisholm. That's right. Owns a Circle RC layout. Lays over between here and that Lake Mojave resort you're always going What's to. the trouble? He losing some of his cattle? Oh, losing plenty of them. They're being poisoned. Oh? No? Only, it's not them steers I'm worried about. It's Rafe. What do you mean? Well, Johnny, I just found out that he just found out who's been contaminating them water troughs. Yeah, who, Jake? Well, he won't say, but listen. Yeah? If he really does, well, I know Rafe Chisholm pretty good, Johnny. He's a bad character. I wish I'd never sold him insurance. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he does know, well, Johnny, this whole thing is going to end up in a killing. Either whoever's doing this or Rafe himself. The circle I see. That's right. So, will you come out here and see what you can do about it right away? Sure. Okay, Jake, I'll be there. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola, and because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics, so serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable, rock smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Stay young and stay on air. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance Company, Kingman, Arizona office. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Sidewinder matter. Jake Kessler hadn't given me very much to go on, but if my old friend Buster favor, if Buster knew about the Circle RC and its troubles, well, expense account item one is three fifty for a phone call to Davis Dam 72, the Lake Mojave Resort. I sure do know about that water poisoning over at the Circle RC, Johnny. After all, it's only 50 or 60 miles from here. Good. Then Buster... I hope you can get on out here before somebody gets killed over it. Yeah, that's about the way Jake Kessler put it to me. So how'd you like to meet me at the airport over in Vegas? Be glad to. All right. Now, Buster, the best connection I can make will get me in there at 6 o'clock in the morning, okay? I'll be waiting for you, Johnny. Good. Item 2, 163.90, plane fare to Las Vegas, Nevada. True to his word, Buster Faber was there waiting for me. In his car, we headed east on Route 95 to Boulder City, then turned south toward Kingman. And I wondered just how much food there was for a herd of beef cattle out here in this seemingly bare desert country. For sure it's a problem, Johnny, but a much bigger one is keeping them supplied with enough water. See those windmills here and there? Yeah, I've noticed them. Well, every one of them has a big water tank and a watering trough at the base of it. Without them, those Herefords all die off. We turn here. All right. Jake Kessler said this Rafe Chisholm is a pretty bad character. You ask me, Johnny, you Rafe just soon kill a man as he wouldn't talk to him. The sidewinder, they call him. And good reason, too. He's just as mean as a sidewinder. Ah. Uh -huh. That's why nobody was very happy to see him politic himself into a lease on that good ranch land with all the water it's got on it. Doubt if a single one of his pumps ever goes dry, which is more than you can say for most of the wells out here, believe me. But now somebody's poisoning the water for him. That's right. Any idea who? No doubt about it. Who, Buster? His ex-partner in a gold mine. Another bad character. Name is Jerry McCoy. It was by cheating Mac out of his chair of the mine that Chisholm got the money to lease the ranch. I see. And Mac swore if he ever caught up with Chisholm, he'd get even with him. Ask me, Johnny, Mac has caught up with him. As 
Western Cattle Ranch's go, it apparently wasn't a very large one. But Buster pointed out where the fence line extended nearly two miles back into the mountains at the east end of it. As we neared the ranch house, I could see what he'd meant about the water. There were more trees and green than I'd seen anywhere else in this desert country. The ranch house itself was a sprawling, unpainted affair, but there was a flower garden at the side that appeared to be doing quite well. A dozen or so chickens pecking away at the dirt. As we stopped, a woman came running out of the door, came over to meet us. Oh, it's you, Mr. Favor. Howdy, Miss Chisholm. I'd like you to meet Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh, howdy, Mr. Dollar. Hi. Listen. Johnny now, was a Mr. special investigator for your husband's insurance company. Oh, then you've got to do something, Mr. Dollar. Do something about my husband, about Ray. Well, he's the one I came to see. Is he here? No. No, that's the reason you've got to do something about him. You've got to stop him. From what? Oh, it was about an hour ago that my son come in from out on the range. My son, Wayne. Yeah? Wayne had been over along the east fence fixing to repair a broken post, but instead he come on back here and told his pa, told Ray... Told him what, Mrs. Chisholm? Jerry McCoy. McCoy. Wayne had saw McCoy out there fooling around the trough at the windmill, fixing to poison it he must have been. And it is McCoy. Oh, what did your husband do about it? Oh, he... He grabbed his pistol, that old 45, and that knapsack of his, and he rode out there after him. Rafe will kill him, Mr. Dollar. Oh, he'll get killed himself, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, uh, knapsack, did you say? Oh, yes, sir, that, that knapsack. Oh, why do you say it that way? What's in it? Well, I don't rightly know, Mr. Dollar. Last few days, ever since he heard that McCoy was in these parts, he wouldn't let anybody touch it. He's kept it hid away. Oh, that's funny. Miss Chisholm, do you think Wayne could show us where it was he saw Jerry McCoy? I don't know where he is. Wayne has gone out somewhere, too, and I'm so worried about him. Why do you say that, Mrs. Chisholm? With Rafe and the kind of temper he's in, anybody got in his way or tried to stop him? Rafe's a dangerous man, Mr. Dollar, and he's got that gun with him. But his own son? You don't know that Rafe, Mr. And we better find him quick. We'll have to track him, Johnny. Uh, Miss Chisholm, are there a couple of extra horses we can use? Oh, yes. Help yourself. It's a lot better than a car out there in that mesquite and sage. Come on. And uh, maybe we'll find Wayne for you, too. Oh, I hope so, Mr. Caver. I hope he's all right. Yes, sir. I hope so, too. But with that crazy man out there with a the gun. Yeah, come on, Buster. It looks like we've got our work cut out for us. Again, for the 11th straight year, Camel outsold every other cigarette. Filter, king size, and regular. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. So if you're smoking more now but enjoying it less, change to Camel's. Get more real satisfaction every time. Start to really enjoy smoking again. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Sidewinder Matter. Yeah, yeah, Johnny, I was afraid of this. Afraid of what? Those tracks down there, those hoof prints. I still don't see how you spot them, Buster, among all the cattle tracks and the other hoof prints. A real fresh, Johnny. And Rafe's mount turns out his left forefoot a little. See it there? Oh. But the other tracks that follow his, that must be the boy's horse. If Wayne catches up with him or old Rafe sees he's being followed, you got a gun with you, haven't you? Yeah, right here. Good. But I sure hope you don't have... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I heard that. Gunshot, huh? Pistol shot. 
Must have been that 45 Rafe's carrying. And it probably means that he's found McCoy. Or he's discovered that Wayne's trailing him. If only we had some way of knowing where that shot came from. If only I hadn't been so busy talking my fool head off. So, uh, well, I guess the only thing we can do is to keep following those trails. Here we go. Oh, boy. Johnny, that shot came from over there at Black Canyon, way over there to the right. Rafe has a windmill and a water trough and an old feed shack, too. Now let's go. Hi up. Oh, boy. Oh. that mesa. Those big dust clouds building up. I knew this here was too still out here. Johnny, that dust over the mesa coming this way means that inside of five, maybe ten minutes, we're going to be in the middle of the worst sandstorm you ever heard of. Well, we better get on back to the ranch. We'd never make it. we got to find cover. Come on, boy. All right. But where, Buster? Over there on the right. Shadow Mountain. Big cave in the side of it. And let's go, brother. Come on, boy. Up, up. Just pray we can make it, Johnny. And believe me, I mean pray. Get up. It was less than a mile to the cave in the side of Shadow Mountain. But by the time we'd covered half the distance, the sandstorm came roaring in on us. The hot, dry wind pounded and pummeled us at 50 or 60 miles an hour, hurling clouds of blinding, cutting sand ahead of it. How the horses were able to take this, I'll never know. Bent low on the saddle, our hats pulled down with handkerchiefs over our faces. We not only couldn't see, we could hardly breathe. As the storm got worse, we were forced to dismount, to cover the heads of the horses with our coats, to lead them on foot. But we kept on, and I prayed that Buster still knew where he was going. Buster, whom I could track only by hanging onto the tail of the horse that he was leading. Then, finally, the Lee of Shadow Mountain, the life-saving protection afforded by the deep cave in the side of it. And there, to keep us company, were other fugitives from the sandstorm. Half a dozen jackrabbits, a couple of coyotes, a fox, and several kinds of rats and mice huddled together silently, forgetting for the moment all the ancient instinctive enmities in their escape from the peril outside of the cave. And the wind roared with the sound of thunder, as though shrieking its anger, its frustration at having failed to smother us out there, as though now trying to deafen us with its sheer power. As we crouched there, the horses stayed close to us, making strange sounds, little sounds that I'd never heard before. It was almost like the whimpering of a frightened child. Then, after what seemed like ages, but could only have been a couple of hours, the wind subsided. As suddenly as it had come up, I started to rise, but Buster touched my arm and motioned me to wait. And then came the hail. A hailstorm of the kind you may hear about and never quite believe. Right here in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Hailstorms. Some of them almost as big as golf balls, dashed against the rocks outside. And some of those hailstones rolled into the cave, then melted at our feet. Finally, it stopped. The little animals who'd been our companions quietly looked at one another, then one at a time departed. Maybe, maybe a little chastened by this having shared the comfort of each other's presence for a while. Well, Johnny, kind of gives you respect for this, does it, doesn't it? Yeah. Too bad those animals don't always get along so well, so peacefully, isn't it? I guess you could say that about some of the people in this world, too, couldn't you? Well, we lost our trail, but we know where those shots came. Johnny. Now what? Half under that rock, the one that blocks the entrance. There's somebody lying there, Buster. Must have come in during the storm. Wayne. Johnny, it's young Wayne Chisholm. Oh. Oh. Wayne. Oh. Wayne. Are you all right, boy? Uh, hello, Mr. Favor. You're hurt, Wayne. You've been shot. Who did this? My, my pa. Your pa? Rafe Chisholm? I'll be all right. What happened? I, it was terrible. Tell us, boy. Tell us. Terrible. Terrible. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. 
Four-Way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take Four-Way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-Way, only 29 cents. And now here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Wayne boy, listen to me. You mean your own father shot you? Yes, sir. But it's all right. He only nicked me. What happened, Wayne? Well, I don't think he meant to hit me, Mr. Faber. Well? But when he saw that I'd followed him after he got there looking for Jerry McCoy... Did he find McCoy? Well, he told me to go back, and he cursed me, and he fired a couple of wild shots at me. The three we heard. But I don't think he meant to hit me. I wonder. Then I hid behind some deer brush, and then worked my way down again so as I could see what he was doing. Well, what about McCoy? Oh, Pa. Pa found him all right. There in the feed shack, there in Black Canyon, where he was skinning out one of our young steers, in there out of the sun. Okay, then, Johnny, we better get on over. No, no, wait, wait, Buster. Then what happened, Wayne? It was terrible, mister. It was awful. I was close enough I could see him. I could hear him through the open window of the feed shack. You think I didn't know all the time it was you, McCoy, that was poisoning the water for my cattle? Yeah. Well, I told you I'd get even for what you'd done to me over in that gold mine, Rafe, and now I've got you just... No, 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 no put down that gun. Don't. Don't tell me, Rafe. Kill you. And get myself in real trouble? Then put it down. Put it away. See, I got no gun on me. I ought to kill you, Mac. I've been thinking about this a long time, about what I'd do when I caught you. But what's the use? What's the use of killing you? Now listen, listen, Rafe, I'll make it up to you for the cat I poisoned. Make it up? Yeah. The insurance takes care of that. So, Mac, I'm going to let you go. Yeah. You mean you ain't going to... Turn me over to the police. Only if you do exactly what I tell you to do. Yeah, yeah, Rafe, I'll do anything. Sure you will, because I got this gun on you. Now start cutting a lot of strips, a lot of thongs off of that steer hide. Yeah. You're going to tie me up? You're going to leave me out here to die? Do like I tell you. Go ahead. Or maybe I will pull this trigger. But you said you'd let me go, Rafe. Hurry up. You're going to need a lot of them. Me? Why, well, I don't understand you. <laughs> you think I'd want anybody to know I let you go? The man that was poisoning my cattle? Keep cutting them strips. I am, Rafe, I am. Yeah, it's got to look like you got the best of me. Tied me up and left. What? You're going to tie me up to this post in here. Tie you up? Go ahead, do like I tell you. Go ahead, Mac. Unless you want a bullet in your head. Go ahead. All right. Pull them strips around my ankle tighter. Yeah. Yeah, Rip. Sure. Put another one around my neck, around the post. Yeah. But this is some trick on me, Rafe. Ain't no trick. But now listen, a couple of days out here, with no water, you die. Come on, tighter. I still got this gun on you. But... I'm no killer, Rafe. You won't be. Because a couple of hours and that boy of mine will be back here with help. I don't trust you. see me tied up this way, they'll never know I got soft and let you get away. I still don't trust you yet. Uh, you got no choice. Now, uh, here you are. You'll never get loose. Unless they come out and cut you loose. You think I'd take this chance if I didn't know they would? Well, you get out of here. The wind's coming up. And there's going to be a sandstorm. All right. I will. And, uh, here. Your gun? That's right. Take it. Because I know you ain't got the guts to use it on me. And it's better if they think you took it off me. I don't get it, Rafe. But I better get out of here before they come for you. 
That's right. You can take my horse, too. Your horse, too, huh? Well, sure, sure, I will. Don't touch that knapsack out there on the ground. Knapsack? Well, Rafe, that's one you carried when we was prospecting. You... You mean... No. Any nuggets in that are mine, Mac. Nuggets? Fool? Ah, yeah, some of the gold you cheated me out of, huh? I'll see for myself. No. Mac, you open that knapsack and you'll be sorry. Eh? Yeah. Will I? Well, you can't stop me. Tied up that way, you can't stop me. Now, because now, open it up. What's in here rightly belongs to me. Every... Ah! Ah! And there, there in that knapsack was three sidewinders. Sidewinders? Rattlesnakes? Good Lord. McCoy, he, he didn't have a chance. Good Lord. There was enough poison in him. Yeah. And not knowing that you'd seen all this, but knowing you'll come back with help, that we'll find him tied up there. Yeah, Johnny. Reeves made it look like he has a perfect alibi. Not that McCoy didn't deserve to die poisoning cattle. It's still murder, Buster. Wayne, do you think you can make it to the ranch? Yes, sir. Then come on, Buster. We'll go on to Black Canyon. We'll pick up our killer. Okay, Johnny. Ironic, isn't it? Yeah. All trussed up and waiting for us. By his own doing. It was late in the afternoon by the time we reached the watering trough in the old feed shack. And the body of Jerry McCoy, already half buried by the sandstorm. And I wondered what sort of punishment could possibly be enough for the man who'd done this to him. Yeah, I wondered until we found Rafe Chisholm tied to that post. Wait a minute. Johnny. We're too late. I know. Rawhide. Green steer hide. As it dried out, it shrank tighter and tighter around his body. Around his neck until he's... Until... Yeah. to question the ways of justice. Expense account total, including a couple of drinks for Buster and myself on the trip back to Hartford, three forty-five forty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, here's our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, Long Beach, California, looking for the tidy sum of $75,000. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>